Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bob Marcus, London North Western Railway Service to Rugeley Trent Valley. We'll be calling at Watford Junction, Hemel Hempstead, Bank and Stead, Trink, Leighton, Buzzard, Fletchley, Milton Keynes Central, Wolverton, Northampton, Long Buckby, Rugby, Coventry, Canley, Tower Hill, Berks, Wildhampton, in Arden, Bailey, International, Marston Green, Bellingham, New Street, Tengbridge Parkway, Best Cops, Warsaw, Bloxwich, Bloxwich North. I've just arrived at Berkhampstead Station in Hertfordshire because right next door, less than 50 yards away, is Berkhampstead Castle. It's castle time. The castle is so close to the railway that when the railway was built in the 19th century it actually cut through some of the original castle site. Whilst today the castle is just a ruin, it marks the location of one of the most significant moments in English history, for it was here that William the Conqueror officially received the surrender of the English in 1066. After the Normans' victory at battle, their next task was to take London. But instead of rushing to the capital, William decided to subdue as much of southern England as he could along the way. Deviating around the Kent coast, William successfully and easily took control of Dover, Canterbury and Rochester. Upon reaching London from the south, he discovered the only access point across the Thames at London Bridge was blocked and well defended. Unfazed, William took the opportunity to continue his progress, heading southwest to gain control of Winchester, where the treasury was kept and where he met with reinforcements from France. At Wallingford in Oxfordshire, William received the surrender of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Further north, at Berkhampstead, he met with the Archbishop of York, key military leaders and Edgar Etheling, the Saxon claimant to the throne, who, after negotiations, all surrendered to William and his Norman army. And so it was from here that William then marched south into the city of London itself, but not before instructing his brother, Robert of Montaigne, to oversee the construction of a castle here. The castle's purpose was to defend the northern entry into London against anyone who might oppose William. The castle was built in a typical Norman Mott and Bailey style. It had a moat as well as a secondary defensive ditch which ran around the entire castle perimeter, making it particularly well defended. The castle's extra defences were put to the test in 1216 when Prince Louis of France invaded England as part of the English Baron's plan to overthrow King John. The castle was besieged for two weeks until the occupants were forced to surrender by the King himself. Over the years, the castle remained a defensive fortress and was home to monarchs as well as several noblemen, including Thomas Becket, later Archbishop of Canterbury and then later still Saint. It was a favourite home of the Black Prince, who was the son of Edward III. But it was after the reign of Elizabeth I that the castle first fell into disrepair and by the 16th century it's thought that much of the castle's stonework was plundered to build property in the nearby town of Berkhampstead itself. 
Today, the castle is looked after by the Burke Hampstead Castle Trust alongside English Heritage, and they both have big plans for the site, hoping in future years to build a visitor centre which can tell in much more detail the significant history and stories that once took place here. But not before instructing his brother, Robert of Montaigne. Oh, train. 